Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Vishwa Talks. My name is Mani, and I'd like to thank you all for attending today's event. For those of you who have attended a Vishwa Talk before, a very warm welcome back. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, I know you've already seen it in the video, but here's a little bit about us anyway. Vishwa Talks is an initiative by Vishwa. Vishwa is an online platform for everyday change makers and social champions such as yourselves. It's a crowdfunding and crowdsourcing platform that is aimed at helping anyone find the support they need in their efforts and endeavors to not only help themselves, but to help others and in the process, make the world a better place. Vishwa Talks are a series of weekly webinars hosted every Saturday that are focused on gaining in-depth knowledge from the experts on a wide range of topics that are pertinent to our current context. This week's webinar is in partnership with Roshni Trust, a wonderful Hyderabad-based mental health NGO, which has been rolling out an initiative to conduct free psychiatry camps for the underprivileged since 2014, amongst other initiatives. Our speaker today, I'm very happy to introduce, is Niharika Kamalia, who is a holistic health and wellness practitioner, who has also been working in the field of counseling and training for 13 years. Her session centered around the application of various mental techniques to achieve awareness and mindfulness. Her programs focus on proactive and preventative well being and stress and anxiety management. After eight years of working as a lawyer and company secretary at the Tata Group of Companies and as a business administrative manager in the fashion industry, she decided to follow her passion and start her own initiative called Wellness with Niharika. Her love for the subject motivated her to explore opportunities related to the field where she can be of help to others. Her talk today aims to help us discover the true meaning of spirituality and how it can be used to unlock a serene lifestyle that could be awaiting us all. Now, without further ado, if I may please ask Niharika to start today's session. Niharika, on to you. I call it challenging because it's not something which you can define easily. Not something which you can touch and you know, you know that, okay, this is this. So the challenging factor and the interesting factor because of that. And it's definitely not any kind of philosophy or a concept or an idea. Then leaves us with a question, what is spirituality? Spirituality is an experience. And repeat that for everyone. Spirituality is an experience. So very often when I'm asked about spirituality, whether it be my clients on a one-to-one -one basis or in a general social setup, before I even attempt to answer that question, I always inquire and ask the person who's asking me what is spirituality, that why do they want to know about it? You know, whether they've had a bad experience with religion, and that's why they want to know about spirituality, or, you know, they've tried atheism only to realize that that is another form of religion and nothing else. Or it is some new age trend where you want to fit in. You know how these cool kids talk about the fact that, oh, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. Or is it a reason where you want all these fancy books in your bookshelf? It can be anything. Point being that it's important that you inquire, why do you want to know about it? And why is that? Because it creates self-awareness. That's your first step towards self-awareness. Now, why are we talking about self-awareness in terms of spirituality? Where is the connection? What is the relevance? So, you got to know that everything, everything in life begins with you, your self. So very simply put, spirituality is the knowledge and the awareness. It is your intentional action, okay, with progress. And eventually it's about evolution and transcendence of the self. Hence the self. So the word here or the concept here, which you need to understand, which is actually in bold italics, underlined to be reflected upon is self. What is self? 
what is our true nature? What is your true nature, my true nature, our as a whole, our true nature? What are we? So spirituality is when we start living life more at the level of the spirit, okay? Our humanness becomes very secondary to us, okay? Our sense organs, our human body, like our eyes, our ears, which is actually always projecting outside. From your eyes, can you see inside? No, you're projecting and watching what's happening outside. With your ears, what do you do? You're hearing what's happening outside. So when those senses, that humanness becomes secondary and your soul, okay, your spirit takes a primary position is when you're living a spiritual life. When your individual identity, okay, and when I say individual identity, I mean your linear identity. That is that sense of I or the ego. For example, I am Niharika, okay? I am Prerna. I am Akhilesh. I like this. I believe in this. I feel this is right. You're with me getting it? So that sense of I, okay, takes a back seat. And your timeless identity, okay, which is of your soul, takes the forefront in your life. Now that timeless identity, okay, why do I call it timeless? Because a human body comes into existence, right? We are born at a certain date time and then we die and that's also recorded as a death certificate. So we as human forms, human body, are existing in that time space continuum, right? We come and we go, but our spirit continues. It's not there within the time space limit, okay? It goes on and continues forever. And honestly, I use the term timeless identity for our spirit only to help you explain it's actually no identity at all, all right? See, when it comes to spirituality, the words become very, very limiting. Why? Because it's an experience. It's tough to explain it. Hence, we need to experience it, right? So this timeless identity of a soul, coming back to the point, which is actually no identity at all, is something we need to look into when we talk and want to experience spirituality. So you might ask me, if there is no identity at all, what is there? What exists? You know, we always put labels and identities to things. So the questions come, if that is not there, what is there? So that's the answer, the biggest answer, the most important answer is there is one limitless, nothingness and that is what we call consciousness okay so everything is consciousness and consciousness is everything i am consciousness you are consciousness maybe the ring i'm wearing is consciousness the plants you see here are consciousness everything and anything is just consciousness so some of you or most of you might be finding this idea very weird or maybe a very esoteric concept which is not settling in. But it will be like that only until you truly experience it for yourself, right? See, intellectually, some of you might be getting what I'm saying. Some of you might be getting it partially. But if you want to get it viscerally, you want to get it energetically. You've got to experience it. Why? Because the divine, the divine can only and only be experienced. It cannot be limited in concepts or words. Yeah? So now this brings me and brings us to the major difference between religion and spirituality. 
So in religion, what happens? Like your parents, for example, most commonly, they teach you that, okay, this is a God figure. This is how we pray. We have to believe in this, so on and so forth. To them, their parents would have explained the same thing or some pundits or some priest or some kind of Godhead depends on the religion, correct? But in spirituality, what you're doing is you're not believing blindly somebody else. Be it your parents, your pundit, whoever. You're not believing anybody else. Okay? What are you believing then? That's the beauty. That's the power. You're believing yourself. How are you believing yourself? Because you're experiencing it. It's your own experience. How empowering is that, guys? Think about it. Right? And once you've experienced it, trust me, it doesn't matter what you call it. Whether you call it God with a capital G or a small g or you call it Allah or Brahman or consciousness or energy, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. The name becomes irrelevant to it. So as you move through space and time, meaning, as you live your life regularly, either working, or let's take this moment as an example, where you're listening to me, I am talking to you, okay? Observe, observe where you are experiencing life from. Is it hinged upon your linear identity, something we just spoke about, okay? Your ego-based identity, or are you experiencing life at the level of the spirit. Like, are you deeply connected and are you experiencing life at that soul level? Now, I don't, let me try and give you a very rough example because words are truly, truly very limiting when it comes to this. For example, when I'm speaking to you right now, are you already thinking that, oh, what is she talking about? Or I don't get it. Or does it really make sense? Oh, how is it going to help me? Oh, when is this going to get over? I need to make lunch. Or, oh, I need to do something tomorrow. It's a Sunday, etc., etc., etc. Okay? So are these blockages coming your way? Is your ego mind more dominant in speaking to you? Or are you simply just connected, listening to me with open awareness, just absorbing whatever I am offering or whatever life is offering to you right now. That is what will tell you or give you a little insight into yourself, whether you're living more at the level of the spirit or more towards your ego-based human side. Okay? So, whether it's the consciousness that's taking the dominant position, that awareness, or is it the contents of consciousness, like your ego, right? So when this consciousness and this awareness that we're talking about turns, okay? Turns and looks within, okay? That is when you slowly start living an awakened life. It becomes aware of its power. It recognizes its true nature. You focus from the outside world, you know, based on your sensory human organs, like the examples I've given you of your eyes looking outside, your ears hearing what is going on outside, becomes less. Your spirit increases more. That consciousness sort of turns, starts looking within. Correct? When that happens is when and what we call self-realization. We call it Siddha consciousness. That's when you're living life at the level of the spirit, an awakened life. You're not letting life pass you by, right? You know what you're doing. You're aware of things. You're at the driver's seat in your life. And that is where the real flex is. The real flex, the real power, 
is not in the success what you have it's not about the money you have it's not about a good looking partner you have it's not about the materialistic things you have or the number of followers you have or friends you have see all those things are definitely important okay nothing to take away from it it's needed it's a fact of this relative field of reality this realm of earth that we live in in this human body so nothing to take away from that but the point i'm trying to offer you right now is that's not where the power lies so you need to know you need to tap into that awareness within where the real flex is okay you need to take the bull by the horns and then navigate your life not let life pass you by so this is a call out a shout out to all the young people out there you know don't wait until you're older you're 60 years old or you're retired say that you're very busy right now and you look into all these things later no sadly i feel it's too late by then right because the major decisions of your life that you take you know in terms of either personally or professionally both see if you want to categorize your life what is there in life two things right broadly your personal life and your professional life so in both those aspects the major decisions you take are during your youth who to marry who not to marry what career to pursue what not to pursue what kind of a relationship you want with yourself your friends your family so on so forth right so don't do it don't take such major decisions from the space of ignorance right be aware create that awareness and then navigate your life through that makes sense well i really hope so yeah okay moving forward we need to realize that this mind body okay this mind body of ours is just secondary we've established that and that is the vehicle of our soul okay this is not our true nature or our true essence it is very secondary so to understand this better think of an ocean okay take you tell yourself to a beautiful land of ocean imagine the blue green water those beautiful colors clear sands and just visualize the beautiful waves coming out and merging back into the ocean that will pretty much sum up what i'm trying to explain right now okay so that ocean is our consciousness it's the one limitless nothingness the one true reality if you may okay and we as human spirits are like the waves okay we come out of that ocean we are temporary for a bit we are there and we merge back into the ocean but the true nature the true essence of both the ocean and the wave meaning the ultimate consciousness what we truly are and us in this temporary human form stays the same and what is the true essence in terms of this example the liquidity the water or the wetness right and even if waves come or doesn't come does anything change in the ocean no the consciousness just remains the same similarly we are consciousness and consciousness is us sadly people we are so stuck in our day to day lives we are so so stuck and we are so conditioned over generations and even if you don't go back to that point even today as a society there is so much of conditioning that we sort of become unaware okay we are not realizing we are not taking that pause we are not dwelling in that stillness where we can come up and realize what we truly are okay what's our true nature we are not letting that consciousness turn 
and look within. Correct? We have forgotten that beautiful quality. And what is our beautiful quality? That blissful quality, the quality of love, the quality of wholeness. That is what we are. We don't have to do something to be loved. We don't have to achieve something to feel whole. We are already that whole. Only what we are lacking is that awareness. So tap into yourself, you know, into that intelligence within you and start living from that position of strength. Okay. Now let's move on to our next big question. Why should we explore spirituality? We've understood what spirituality is and what, you know, it can briefly offer us and what are we talking about? Now let's get more specific. Spirituality is our most dependable, our most sustainable anchor in life. Okay. It is ever ready and ever inviting all of us to befriend it. Hold its hand and move forward in life. It can help you in all aspects of your life. It can help you in your health, your career, your relationships, anything you name it. Right? Anything you name it and spirituality is there to befriend you, be your anchor. Especially your mental health. Right? So mental health, I assume, some of you might know, is not just a mere absence of mental illness. Just because you're not diagnosed or labeled as, you know, for example, having depression or anxiety or some kind of a mood disorder doesn't mean that you are mentally healthy. No. Let's not set our standards so low. We are so much more. And we are so capable of, you know, realizing that. So mental health is when... We can engage, okay? We can engage, we can connect first with, of course, ourselves because everything begins with us and then with others in our environment. When I say environment, I mean your friends, your family, then a little outer circle of your colleagues, then society in general, so on and so forth, right? When you can engage with them in an organic healthy, meaningful manner, okay? And when, if life happens, life happens meaning life throws its challenges to you because that's going to happen as long as we are in this human form, even if spirituality is your friend, not that there's not going to be any problems, okay? Such is the nature of reality, right? So when life happens, some stresses come into your life, what spirituality is offering you is to engage with that stressor from a point of or a position of strength, okay? Not from a position of fear. Most of us, sadly, engage with stressors in our life from a very fearful position, right? We either try to avoid it, we try to suppress it, we try to pin it on others, so on and so forth. But please know this, people. If the stresses life is offering you and you just avoid or suppress it, it doesn't go away. In a very temporary form, it might go away, but life will run its full circle, full cycle, and it will eventually come back to you. So why avoid it? Doesn't make sense. So befriend spirituality. Okay, engage with those stressors. Yes, when you engage with your stressors, your energy will be high, stress level will be high, your graph of that energy and stress will go up. But with spirituality on your side, when that graph comes down, okay, it'll come down. You will reach your restorative baseline, okay, you will reach your homeostasis. And once you reach that homeostasis, you will reach it in a way where there is no trauma and damage to you. That's the difference. That is what spirituality is offering and inviting you for. Yeah, makes sense? So it offers you basically that resilience, that equanimity, 
that window of tolerance where you can take challenges head on, not try to avoid it, engage with it and come back without damage. To break it down further, to make it more simpler, spirituality as we know, gives us a sense of purpose, right? And that means a lot for any human being, correct? Some meaning, that you have some importance, some meaning, some relevance in being born on this earth at this point of time, right? It offers you connection. Now, connection is very, very important. Because you know what is the first desire of a spirit when it's born in the human form? It's to connect. That is the first and the deepest desire of any spirit. And spirituality offers you just that. It gives you a sense of inner meaning. It'll give you a sense of confidence. Hence offering you more self-esteem. Okay, when you're going through problems again, some challenges again, when you are going through, say, for anxiety, depression, things like that, you know, when you feel that, oh, my God, everything is wrong. And this is my only reality. It sort of helps you zoom out of that issue by offering you a wider and more expansive perspective on life. You know, reminding you constantly that you are not just this body, you're not just your problem, you're not just this issue. There is something so much more to you. And even if you feel that you're alone, you're, you know, at this moment, you're incomplete, you're not. Because you are whole, you are born whole. You're just part of that consciousness, right? So that helps a lot. And, you know... Even religion and even spirituality both offer you a sense of belonging, a sense of community. Again, very, very important so that you don't feel that disconnect. So there can be an endless list of, you know, what spirituality can offer in terms of your health. It can help you manage your emotions better, right? It gives you that strength to be able to handle your emotions better. If you handle your emotions better, when you have alternate perspectives, more emotional intelligence, then of course you can engage better, your life is happier, your relationships are more successful, correct? And coming back specifically to mental health again, you know, if you are going through any of these disorders, you go to your doctor, you go to a therapist, you know, they might offer you medication or no medication, depending on where you stand in terms of your illness. And with those practices, the symptoms, you know, of your illness might fade away gradually. You might be cured, but you might not be healed. There is a difference between being cured and being healed. And who bridges that gap? It's spirituality. What do we mean by being healed? Being healed means when you know, when you have that sense that you are whole, you are complete. And that wholeness and that sense is what is sustainable for your health. So don't settle for just being cured. Okay, take a step ahead, raise your standards and expectations out of yourself and the quality of your life and try to be healed. Okay, so when you know these health practitioners, if any of you are there, if it makes sense to you, you know, when a patient comes to you, I'm sure you ask for the mental health history, you ask for the physical health history, maybe add an angle of spiritual health history. Because knowing the spiritual health history of a person, the spiritual background of a person gives a very fresh insight and the knowingness to that person's being into their belief system. And that can help in diagnosis, prognosis, when the patient is recovering in all aspects, right? So let's not miss out on that. 
So when you're established in spirituality, you know, other than all these things we already spoke about, even despite this, if there's anything I've not covered specifically, please know that, you know, whatever life brings you by, any kind of hurt, any kind of pain, any kind of betrayal that you might feel, you might be shaken, of course. It's not that you will not feel anything bad. You might, but you'll never be stirred. You'll never be broken. You know, even if you feel lost, you'll be able to find a way back to yourself. Just like connecting is the first desire of the soul when the soul is born in this human form, the greatest fear of the soul is that of disconnection. So spirituality will never let you feel alone and disconnected. You know, that's one of the most common underlying causes with so many suicides that we see. The people lose that sense of connectedness and they feel lonely. So if you have spirituality by your side, you will never be so alone and so lost. You'll be able to figure life out. Yeah? So stay connected to your soul. Feel safe in your wholeness. Be your authentic self. Don't try to fit into society all the time. You know, don't seek for that validation constantly outside because all the answers, all the safety, all the security you're looking for is very, very much within you. Okay, so that's the key takeaway. So live a more soul-driven life and less ego-driven life. Okay. So when you've had a bad day, guys, and when you, you know, sit into a couch and you totally sink in and then you just feel relaxed, if any of you have ever experienced that feeling, you know, that's exactly, that's the closest I can explain it to you that spirituality offers you. That warm, fuzzy feeling that you're okay, you're safe and life is good and you'll be fine, even if you don't feel very fine at that point of time. So you don't really miss out on that, okay? There's no other experience which is so fulfilling, okay, for us human spirits than this. So make use of it. It's waiting. It's inviting you to make use of it. And trust me, everything else. Moving on, let's see what spirituality is not. Spirituality is not about avoiding action, nor is it about escaping life at all. It's not about leaving everything, going to the Himalayas and just, you know, letting go of desires and just sitting there. It's not about that. That's not the focus of spirituality. Because spirituality can never be limiting, guys. Spirituality is very expansive. It's limitless. There is no start point, there is no end point. It's very open, very broad, okay? And the agenda of spirituality is definitely not what I like to call the three R's. It's not about rituals, it's not about restrictions, it's not about renunciations. The focus is not, oh my God, you can't have that piece of meat, or oh, you can't have that glass of wine. Oh, or you can't wear that color. You have to be dressed in a particular white or a particular something, right? It's not about those things. It's so much more than that. Once you start experiencing it, you'll realize more what I'm talking about, okay? It's about engaging, engaging with knowledge, engaging from a point of awareness. Okay, it's not mindless action. Again, you're not letting life pass you by. It's intentional action. It's conscious living, conscious engagement. Yeah. And it's definitely not about spiritual entertainment. 
these days what happens is what i call spiritual entertainment is people will you know maybe attend a talk maybe watch a short clip on youtube or instagram or some social media handle somewhere hear some positive talks and feel all good about it nothing wrong with that okay feel good then what you got to internalize it you got to practice it you need to make that a part of your lifestyle right when you do that is when you're living a spiritual life okay you're connecting with yourself you're growing evolving changing ultimately to transcend the self if you want to get entertained watch movies listen to music be there as long as that is going on forget about it spirituality is not that so don't make it an entertainment yeah it's more than that respect that use it it's waiting to be used and lastly what it is not that it is not about constant happiness okay no false hopes i'm going to offer you here it is not about constant happiness because what is spirituality it is you meeting you right you turning inwards you doing that inner work right and as humans all of us have light and darkness within us so there will be moments where you are on the spiritual journey where you know you'll meet some dark parts of your being your life and you might not like it it might not be pleasant and that's okay why because spirituality is not just about positivity it's about transcending that darkness bringing in more light and with your practice that will happen okay so of course spirituality is definitely the ultimate lifestyle have a go at it it is better than a vegan lifestyle which you think is the ultimate lifestyle and see for yourself how you do how you feel right now how can you practice spirituality okay the question comes what are spiritual practices how can you create a spiritual lifestyle the best answer is guys you can give to yourselves to be very honest but i'll sort of give you a framework within which you can pick and choose if you want to start on this journey if you're not already on it so please know there is a element of bio individuality when it comes to spirituality what do i mean by this it's a beautiful term which is coined by my teacher joshua rosenthal what it means is the practice of spirituality will be very unique to each and every person it is not one size fits all what might work for me what might be true to me might not be true to you might not call out to you and that is okay because spirituality is not about a you know this to do list or not to do list or right or wrong nothing there's nothing like that in spirituality so for some of you um, spirituality may look like simply worshiping one godhead okay for someone it might be reciting a certain prayer for someone it might be chanting some mantras for others it might be practicing positive affirmations for someone it might look like some breath work some meditation and meditation also there are different forms and kinds depends on where you are at your journey it can look like yoga and when i talk about yoga i'm just not talking about about body flexibility and the asanas yoga is so much more and beyond okay the holistic practice of yoga it might look like tai chi chi gong it might be you being a part of a satsang or it might just be as simple as spending time in nature and feeling that connectedness a higher purpose a connectedness might just be that okay and please know at this point of time that your definition of spirituality or what your practice of spirituality looks like will change and evolve as you change and evolve it's very dynamic it will never be the same otherwise how will it be spirituality right because spirituality is about evolving it's about growing it's about connecting so it can never be stagnant 
So be open to that. Whatever life is offering you, as and when you grow, evolve, be open to that. Okay? That's the beauty, right? There's nothing boring to it. It keeps changing. But no matter what practices you do, again, I'll reiterate myself, no matter what spiritual practices you guys do, please know that the common thread that ties this all together is the sense that there is something bigger than you, especially bigger than your mind body, bigger than you, that you are not alone. You are connected first to yourself because everything begins with you, then to some higher purpose, some higher energy, whatever you call it, name doesn't matter. And that the basic purpose of your life, of my life, of all our lives, is to grow, evolve, and become one with that ultimate consciousness. That is what spirituality is. Okay? So we end our talk with this. All right? So what we can do now is we can go through a meditation. Now, this is a meditation, guys, which is like the first step towards self-awareness. We spoke about it at the beginning of the talk, right? That the first step towards spirituality and where it starts is with you, with the self. So first, let's meet ourselves, whatever, wherever we are right now, let's meet ourselves. So what you can do is my suggestion, other than me just guiding you through it, I'll be teaching you also so if you want to take this practice and make this practice and use it in your daily life, just grab a pen and a paper. I'll give you like 10, 20 seconds, get it. So you can do it along with me halfway and halfway you can write it down also so that you remember how to practice it later. And it's more peaceful and not so rushed because here we are on a timeline. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so first of all, just center yourself wherever you are, okay? Let your back be as erect as it is comfortably erect for you, okay? Don't try too hard. Let your feet be on the ground, okay? It's a meditation. I don't want you to do with folded legs. Let your feet be on the ground, okay? You need to be grounded. Now, let me offer you a fact before we get started. You all should know that all experiences that we have in life, any kind of experience, we have like endless experiences through the day, right? Is made up of what is called sensations, feelings, thoughts, and images, okay? For the help of it, we'll call it SIFT, okay? So sensations, images, feelings, and thoughts. It's always a combination of these four things that build up your experience or the quality of your experience, which is called qualia. And both science and spirituality agree to this fact. Now, finally, science and spirituality are talking the same language and they agree to this. Okay, so all your experiences are a combination, combination of these. Now, in that knowingness, Let's start with the meditation, okay? Feel free to note it while I'm talking you through it. Gently close your eyes if you're comfortable with it, okay? Soften your gaze if you don't want to completely close your eyes. Relax your jaw. Drop your shoulders. Come back to your body. And just become aware of your breath. Don't change it. If it's shallow, it is okay. If it's deep, it is okay. Just notice it without the need to change it. Stay with it. And if you're unable to find an anchor, just feel your breath against your nostrils. It'll help you center.
Now, when you're centered, when you're ready, get your attention to your heart center. If it's easier, put your right hand onto your chest, onto your heart for better focus. Get it to your heart center and silently ask yourself three times, who am I? Okay, ask yourself, who am I? And while you ask yourself, stay aware of any feelings, sensations, images, or thoughts that may arise. Okay, any kind of experience that's happening, just allow it to happen. Who am I? Next, focus your attention on your heart center and now ask yourself, what do I want? What do I want? Similarly, let whatever sift is coming, whatever sensation, thoughts, whatever comes, just allow it to gently flow, be aware of it. Next, ask yourself, what is my purpose? Keep your attention centered on your heart center. Look within, let whatever arise, arise. And ask yourself, what is my purpose? Then, when you're ready, move on and ask yourself three times, what am I grateful for? What am I grateful for? Whatever images comes, doesn't come, any sensation comes, doesn't come, is okay. Just ask yourself that. Okay. Next, repeat to yourself, repeat to yourself your first and your second name. For example, Keep your attention in your heart center and repeat, I am Niharika Kamalia. Whatever your name is, repeat that and see what personality images, what ego-based images comes with your full name. Identify, create that awareness, okay? Stay with it. Next, now drop your second name. You will just meditate on your first name. For example, I am Miharika. Okay, this is more innocent because it's just your first name. Your ego personality is coming down. Now intentionally try to bring some innocent childhood memory into your awareness. And just repeat, I am your first name.
Next, drop both your names. Just meditate on I am. This is your true being. This is your sense of awareness. This is you getting connected to the aham, to the ultimate consciousness. No labels, no identity. And be open to any sensation, feelings, and images that may arise. I am. And when you're ready, get your attention now to your entire body, your joyful, energetic body, your entire body. Distribute that beautiful energy all through. Get your focus once again to your heart chakra, your loving, compassionate heart chakra. Okay. Next, elevate your attention to your third eye, to your Agya Chakra, the spot between your eyebrows, your reflective mind. Stay with it. Lastly, Take it a notch up high on your crown chakra. Feel the lightness of your being. Feel the connectedness and the lightness of your being. And when you feel ready, open your eyes. Open it with a soft smile. Rub your palms together with all the beautiful energy you've collected and pass it on to your whole body. Okay. So this meditation, I'm sorry I had to rush into it and not actually able to make you feel the entire thing because of the timeline. But if you've noted it, at peace, in your house, make it a practice, do it gently, stay with your feelings, sensations, let whatever come up, come up without judgment. It'll give you a beautiful insight into who you are, what is your being, what you need, and that'll give you a sense of direction into your spiritual journey. Okay, so I hope it helps. Thank you so much. I end my talk with this. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, uh, Niharika. That was really insightful. And um, I don't know about the audience, but I certainly have a lot of questions for you. I'm sure the audience does too. Uh, but I would like to take a few minutes right now uh, with the audience permission. We'd like to do a small poll before we go on to take uh, uh, to answer the questions from the audience. Um, if I may please ask my team to put the poll up. Uh, the poll is uh, essentially for us to understand you a little better so that we can curate the topics that we bring to you better week on week. Uh, so please take a few seconds to answer this poll. While you're answering this poll, um, as we had mentioned earlier, Vishwa is a crowdfunding website amongst other things. Um, and how we are different from any other crowdfunding website is that we try to help individuals and NGOs that are trying to create a greater impact, especially individuals that are trying to bring about a bigger change in society uh, that could benefit not just themselves, but their community, the country or the world at large. And to this end, we invite individuals and NGOs and we select them very carefully handpicked NGOs and individuals to create fundraisers on Vishwa.org, uh, wherein 
they can ask for the Vishwa community of change makers, which is you, to support them in the brilliant initiatives that they are undertaking. These are selfless initiatives that are trying to help a large number of people. One such fundraiser is by the Balavikas Education Society for Disabled Children. Surveys show that nearly two out of every 100 children in India suffer from some form of mental disability. Children with such disorders find it extremely difficult to communicate with others and function in society. And as a result, need utmost support and care during their developmental journey. For 14 years, Balavikas Educational Society has helped many such children and their parents who needed mental growth and encouragement. The fundraiser on Vishwa is intended to help them pay salaries for their incredibly committed, devoted faculty of teachers and counselors. So please support them in the phenomenal work that they're doing and please donate today. How much ever little you can, every little goes a long way. Another fundraiser on Vishwa.org and you can find the links to all these fundraisers in the chat box. Another, and this is my uh, personal, uh, this is very close to my heart. The fundraiser is being run by Totopali Zilla Parishad High School. Totopali Zilla Parishad High School is located in the Kul Kulvakurti Mandal of Nagar Karnul district. The school has a total strength of 226 students of whom 128 are girls. Unfortunately, the school has seen a high number of girls dropping out recently. And you know the reason for this? The reason for this is a lack of functional toilet. That's right. Lack of something as fundamental as toilets for girls. And because of this, they're dropping out. To address this issue, Totopalli Zilla Parishad High School is raising funds to build new girls' toilets and stop these dropouts. Please donate to their fundraiser and help them solve this problem that can be so quickly rectified and ensure that something as basic as this does not rob these girls of the bright futures that they deserve. And lastly, but absolutely not the least, is our partner today uh, in today's Vishwa Talk, Roshni Trust. Statistics show that every four minutes, someone in India is committing suicide. It's heartbreaking when you think about it. Due to a large scale of urbanization and a shift in the population moving from a family and community centric lifestyle to a nuclear, often lonely urban setting, cases of suicide are on the rise along with several other psychological disorders and emotional maladies. Niharika had touched upon this as well, the lack of a feeling of connectedness. In an effort to change this, Roshni Trust, a Hyderabad-based mental health NGO, has been conducting free psychiatry camps for the underprivileged. Their fundraiser on Vishwa is intended to help cover the cost of these free camps. What we often don't understand is that to seek mental health, help, uh, there are certain resources required and there's a certain level of awareness that needs to be generated. And you see a lot of mental health issues. Roshni has been seeing a lot of mental health issues in the underprivileged communities because they're not aware that there is, there is a problem with them or that even if they are aware, they are not sure if they, where or how they can find the help that they need. So Roshni is doing free camps in these communities and they're raising funds to pay salaries for their counselors, for medication, and for the van that goes from community to community. Um, so please do contribute whatever you can. You can find more information about these fundraisers and others on vishwa.org. The fundraisers you find on Vishwa, as I said, are very carefully handpicked. We look to support individuals and organizations that are passionate about their work and about making the world a better place. Become a part of the Vishwa community of change by donating or supporting a cause that is close to your heart. Please also share our fundraisers with your friends and family because true impact can only be created when we all work together for the betterment of our communities. Lastly, I would also like to tell you that we're very excited to launch a second vertical on Vishwa.org, which is a materials vertical. It's a giveaway materials for free vertical you can think of it loosely as a free OLX. This vertical further enhances the Vishwa platform by bridging the gap between people who donate materials and those who have use for them. Donors can list their items such as clothes, electronics, furniture, books, etc., on Vishwa that they wish to give away for free. 
those who want to receive them can browse for them and request them. And I repeat, listing and receiving items is free on Vishwa Materials Vertical. Thank you for filling the poll. Now, if I may please invite Niharika ji back. Uh, if you don't mind, ma'am, can we take some questions? Absolutely. Please tell me. Um, I will kick off this Q&A round by asking a few questions of my own. I see there are a couple of hands raised. Uh, we will get to you. The rest of you, please put your questions down in the chat box and that will be great. Uh, first and foremost, Niharika ji, thank you so much uh, for giving us a foray into uh, meditation. For even for someone like me, uh, you know, I have a lot of friends who are into meditation, they're into yoga, uh, but there's this, there's, there's a level of inertia. Uh, there's a the thought all thought that crosses my mind is how do I start? Where do I start? You know, and I think you've given us a, a little glimpse of that in today's session. And for anyone who's interested in the audience, if you'd like to pursue that further, uh, we will be sharing uh, Niharika ji's contact details. Please, I'm sure she would be happy to hear from you. My first question to you is, what do you think the difference is between prayer and meditation, spirituality and faith? Uh, you see a lot of people say, oh, I pray every day. I go to the temple regularly, or I go to the church regularly, or I go to uh, the masjid regularly. What is the difference uh, between these two things? Am I doing the same thing? Is there anything different? You know, that you will have to ask the person who's doing it. And I'll tell you why. You have to see what you're bringing back. It doesn't matter whether you say a particular prayer or you sit in meditation. What is it giving you? How is it helping you becoming a more centered person? How is it helping you growing and evolving? That's the bottom line. If meditation works for you, if that makes you a better person, that's your practice. If going to a masjid makes you a better person, that's your practice. So it really doesn't matter. But yes, like I said during my talk also, let it just not be at the level of the mind, at the level of entertainment. Like don't just do it because everybody does it like herd mentality. Be a sovereign thinker and see what works for you. Yeah. And just, yeah. See, ask yourself, go within. Practice this meditation. It'll tell you where you are, where you were, and where you went, want to get to. Yeah, does it make sense? Helps? It does make sense. Um, and I think this is to add to uh, what you said earlier about it being a conversation with oneself. It's you meeting you. Uh, yeah, this is your whole world. This is the whole world. We are all consciousness, same material, same everything. That's great. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we'll take a question from the audience. Um, right. Can I take uh, the question from Sushma Bani, please? Sushma ji. Good morning. Uh, Good. I always look forward to these Saturday sessions. Uh, I had a query. This is for my own growth as well as uh, students who might teach. Uh, very often I experience this myself that while uh, I sit and I believe that meditation is going to give me so much and I'm going to feel so much better. There are days when I'm not feeling good enough to sit and meditate. And uh, I get this feedback even with students. So sometimes they're sitting and I try to tell them, you know, of course, not the very detailed meditation, but uh, whatever little bit I can make them do, like, you know, focus on this or whatever. But there are times when we need to feel good to meditate or rather like, you know, be strong enough to sit and even focus that, that much. So what is a easy method or what is a quick method to just get back into that zone to begin the meditation? Sure, sure, Sushmaji. Very good, very good question. Thank you so much. So let me tell you something first about meditation. What people usually think is meditation is about feeling good. Okay. Yeah. That's the misconception. Meditation is not about feeling good. Okay. As I spoke during my talk, it is you meeting you at some point of time in meditation. So sometimes there'll be darkness. Sometimes there'll be light. So let's not keep that as an agenda and start the practice. 
That's number one. For days, when you don't feel like meditating, please don't meditate. Simple, please do not meditate. Do not force yourself to do something you're not ready to do, right? You can meditate later. If that also doesn't work and you have to and want to meditate and you have a lot of energy, that's why you can't focus. Why can't a person focus? Because you have too much of undischarged energy within you, okay? So do some other kind of meditative practice. Don't do a meditation practice where you have to sit on the floor, closed eyes, you know, some mudra, don't do that. Do a walking meditation. So your energy gets dispensed and you're still meditating. Do a candle meditation where you just focus on the candle. Do a meditation where you're just sitting and feeling the sensations of your body from your toe to your head. So there are multiple options. Yeah, does that help? Yes, definitely. Uh -huh. I was also intrigued by when you mentioned about spirituality and mental health. Uh, what I wanted to understand is how do we recognize sometimes, or rather I would say, do we really recognize what is going on within ourselves? Also. Absolutely not. Exactly. <laughs> I think 99% of the population is disconnected from themselves. So for us to take that first step, what do we do? Try out the meditation I just told you. It. It's done wonders for me. It's not a meditation I have come up with. It's a meditation I learned from Deepak Chopra in my workshop years <laughs> back. And this is where I started my journey. And it's worked out beautifully for me and some people that I work with. And it's not a boring meditation, right? You're constantly changing, asking yourself different questions. So it'll be more happening and less boring and young people will be able to do it better is what I feel. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much. Welcome. Um, that, that was really, uh, I think you put it in a nutshell there, Niharika. Um, because uh, if, I, if I may sum it up, you're essentially addressing those thoughts, those feelings, those emotions, that on a day-to-day -day basis are repressed. You're pushing them in the back of your head. You know, even when we were doing this exercise and I was, uh, I was following, I was trying to do it with you. And uh, suddenly this thought occurred to me that, you know, I was, I was actually losing myself a little bit. And then I had to pull myself back. And the thought in my head was, you've got a webinar going on, <laughs> right? And this is what needs to be done now. And it's that daily, it's, it's that pull that constantly, uh, keeps you in the grind, uh, for a lack of a better word. Right. And I think we often, uh, you know, prioritize that over these introspections that I think what you're trying to say are very important uh, for us. Absolutely. So start small, but start. You'll get the consistency and the pace and you'll realize what works best for you eventually. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, one more question, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, can we have Hanuman Reddy? Tudi, please ask his question. Hanumanji. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, before I put my small two doubts, sir, I wholeheartedly congratulate and admire uh, Niharika ji. In fact, I thank Akhilesh very much for inviting me. I was sincerely telling I was not expecting this kind of uh, you know, a session beyond words. And I wonder how such a young lady, she obviously is just very young, how could she speak? And it's very clear she speaks from the experience rather than from the books. And she excellently brought out the difference between religion and spirituality. Every word I can say, sir, that she uttered is a mantra rather than any words. I, I really congratulate and thank the universe for enabling this uh, session for me. And uh, she said so many things, you know, don't seek for validation constantly outside. This is where everybody suffering from identity crisis and want validation. Our switch of happiness uh, and approval is put in other remote control is put in other people's hands. And you have all the answers inside. She said, live a more soul driven, not ego driven. What not? If I, if I have to say such things, I have to repeat the whole thing. I recorded, fortunately, my, and, uh, my two doubts are, madam, uh, you said something, I think I couldn't hear properly. You said your Guruji said something 
called bio individuality is it the same word that you said that's my first doubt or is there any other word secondly heart center you said uh, does it mean because in uh, uh, heartfulness uh, meditation they say heart center they say the biologically situated heart on the left side and focus on that they say do you mean that or do you mean the center of the you know uh, that one heart center anahata chakra people say that one clarification the other thing initially in the beginning of the meditation you asked us to put our hands on the heart center uh, did you want us to continue putting the physical hand there or remove it and just uh, be aware of that please these three i would say have it ma'am so i'll start with the last question that's fresh in my mind so you can put your hand on the heart center why i suggested that is for many people it becomes difficult to keep their attention on the heart they get distracted yes so if you are a evolved meditator you don't need to do it there's nothing hard and fast but if your mind is getting distracted attention is going to different places a physical touch will sort of solidify it so yes. the choice is yours take your decision and yes the term i used was bio individuality so the school i studied this wellness and nutrition from the founder of it joshua rosenthal has coined this term it's a beautiful term which means that it is nothing is one size fits all meaning okay. that yes. what works for you does not work for me may not work we are okay. individuals and let's be individuals in this human form cosmic form we are all one right but we are on this plane called earth so let's respect yes. that individuality yeah and what about the heart center man situation heart center is your anahata chakra center center yes. not on the left center. side center that chakra is what i refer to thank you very much thank you thank you thank you thank you for your kind words. Words. thank you great words thank you hanuman garu thank you for your question uh we will take one i think we have two more questions uh, niharika ji uh, madan regar can we have madan ji ask his question yeah hi good morning everyone yeah good first morning. of all yeah thank you so much niharika ma'am it was really too good and uh, the thing is just actually i'm not in that mood yeah so it's really appreciable sessions which you have highlighted completely things regarding the meditations i just have one small query from last so many days i was trying to do meditations right but after like from 2 to 3 minutes i am get disturbed like some thoughts will come in my mind and again i am start on the thinking over that thoughts so do you have any kind of uh, advice where i can overcome this kind of situation see when your thoughts come one thing i'll tell you i'll begin with saying what not to do what you shouldn't do at all is push the thoughts away anything okay. that you push harder will come back harder yes right so if yeah. your thoughts come just acknowledge it gently just say that okay i know you're trying to help me you are a part of me but right now i'm doing something else i'll address you later please leave these are my words this is how personally i used to talk to myself and i used to get disturbed so whatever works for you do that don't push it back gently acknowledge it and let it go and please know that meditation is not about emptying your entire mind we are not there we can't even think of that from where we are right now so yeah. give yourself time let those thoughts come that's how we humans are made and just continue with your practice okay, okay. what you resist will persist so do not resist it yeah? okay okay thank you so much and thank you isha team for just uh, giving a you can say opportunity to interact with the such a persons thank you so much if you don't mind i have one last question for let's you let's take this last one before we wrap it so i was uh, i was watching uh, a tibetan monk i think he was an english gentleman who uh, became a monk his name he now goes by the name gelong thupten uh, and he was talking about uh, his transition into meditation and spirituality he talks about his prior life where he was a contractor and he was under a lot of stress and his relationships were falling apart as you were mentioning and he wasn't able to get a grip on it until uh, he visited a monastery uh, on his visits to asia and decided to take the plunge so to speak right. um 
and he talks about his initial journey into spirituality and uh, how for most of it he was encountering this very dark dark deep darkness within him uh, and i think that is a barrier that we all face you know we do, we are scared of sitting uh, by ourselves and looking within because there's so much that we haven't addressed <laughs> over so many years Yes. um what would you say uh, to you know alleviate some of those fears and some of those you know uh, concerns that people might have so meet yourself in small dosages okay and increase your window of tolerance what it's called scientifically because along with spirituality i am a somatic stress management practitioner also who does physical work with the body in which your nervous system okay we know that our mind body soul is all connected right so we need to work holistically in that so physically also work on yourself to increase the capacity of your nervous system your window of tolerance so that when you start meeting yourself in those small doses that darkness you're able to take it okay that doesn't become a block and you're able to move forward that makes absolute sense yeah. uh, take on only as much as you can handle absolutely but keep trying keep trying don't shy away because there's a big dark block in front of you Great. you eventually have to face it so might as well do it now at some point yeah, yeah. correct yeah. Uh, like you said uh, you know it comes back around it comes back a full absolutely. circle uh, sooner or later thank you so much niharika ji that was absolutely wonderful uh very very insightful i have to say in fact uh, very helpful for me and i'm sure it was very helpful for the audience and my team i think there are a lot of pointers here we can work with and move forward with um thank you for the audience uh, thank you for joining us today and making it such an interactive session